Hi everybody, today I'm going to give a presentation of my project. The title of the project is Water Body Detection from Satellite SAR Images Using Deep Learning. So my name is Chao and Dr. Anthony is my supervisor. The outline of this presentation is the following. Introduction, program description, method, result and conclusions. I want to mention that I won't go into too much detail because of the time limitation. So let's start with introduction. What is a SAR image? Actually, SARS refer to synthetic aperture radar. So SAR image actually is an image taken from a radar. Um, here you can see in this figure the difference between optical image and a SAR image. Um, the main advantage of SAR image is that it can penetrate clouds. So this may it may it very useful for cloudy area. So a SAR image is also very useful for water detection. As we can see from the figure, all the water body can be easily identified because they are dark pixels. As we have seen from the previous slide, the water body can be easily identified from a SAR image. Um, the traditional way to extract water from a SAR image is using the stressor method. This method works with each pixel information. When a pixel value is below certain stressor, we can classify it as water. So this method actually works very good in rural areas, but in an urban area, this is not so good. In the next slide, we're going to describe it. So here we apply the stressor method to a real satellite SAR image of Seattle city. And this is the ground truth of the city, so all the blue uh, color actually is water. And if you compare the result, the result of the tracer method with the ground truth, you can see the method is not good. There is a lot of misclassification. For example, many highways and flat area have been misclassified as water. As we have seen in the previous slide that the stressor method is not so good to classify water in cities. We think this is because that the stressor method only considered the pixel information and it did not consider the neighborhood information of that pixel. So we propose neural network method to identify water which also consider the neighborhood pixel information. As you know, to train neural network, we need a lot of data. So in this case, we're going to use SO2 SAT dataset from the Technical University of Munich. This dataset consists in many patches of Sentinel-1 SAR images. So the dataset consists in two files, one big one, another small one. Um, each one has 17 classes, but we only need two classes. So we take sample of it. Um, we use this one as our training set and we take the sample of the small one and we use that one, this one as test set. Here is a preview of the data set. So this one are water area and this one are no water area. After we got the data set, we use it to train different neural networks. So the first neural network was multi-layer perceptron. So this one has two hidden layers. The first layer has 512 neurons, and the second layer has 100 neurons. The another neural network that we have used is convolutional neural network. So specifically, we train a CNN with eight convolutional layers and two fully connected layers at the end. So after you train the neural network, how can you use it in your real application? Here we have an example of an image of 2000 by 2000 pictures. If you want to detect water using neural network, you can create 4 million patches by sliding window approach. And then you can input each of these patches into a neural network. Then the output will give you the probability that the center pictures of the patch is water or not. The last slide I described how to detect water using NLP. So here you can use also CNM 
and using the same approach to detect water. If you pay more attention on sliding window approach with the CNN, you will see that it is very slow <coughs> because it is wasting processing resource to recompute convolution that have already been computed in the preview patches. So we can solve this problem by creating a better version of CNN by converting the convolutional neural network into fully convolutional network. So to convert convolutional neural network into fully convolutional network, you just need to replace the fully connected layer with one by one convolutional layer. This conversion will keep the FCN do exactly the same mathematical operation of CNN. So after the conversion, the new FCM network will have the property of convolutional sliding window, which is often used in object detection. And when you want to classify water in a real application, this property of convolutional sliding window will make the FCM faster than CNN. In this presentation, I don't have enough time to give more details. But if you are interested, you can visit this great video made by Andrew NG. After the conversion, we are going to call this new FCM as FCM encoder or picture based FCM. So this new network will share the same neuron of CNN. The FCN encoder has two main advantages comparing to CNN. The first one is that it is faster than CNN because it is not wasting time to recompute something that is already computed before. And the second advantage is that it can accept input image of any size and we don't need to divide the image into patches. So here we have an example how to detect water using FCN in a real application. Here you just need to input the whole image into the FCN network and then the output will be also the whole image. After we design and trained our neural network, we would like to see which one performed better on the test set. So to get a quantitative assessment in accuracy, F1 score and um, AUC, we train and test each of our neural network 30 times. The result of the mean value and standard deviation is displayed in the table. From the table, we can observe that the proposed FCN encoder got the highest value in accuracy, F1 score, and AUC. And to make sure if these values are significantly better than the others, we apply the t-test and we got the p-value. Since the p-value is lower than 0.05, from here, we can conclude that FCN is significantly better than NLP. And also, we can observe from here that FCN is significantly better than CNN in terms of accuracy and F1 score. And also, we can conclude that FCN achieved the same AOC as CNN. However, we think FCN is still better because in a real application, FCN is faster than CNN. In the next slide, we will discuss more about that. Here we apply CNN approach and FCN approach in a real application to see which one is faster. In our experiment, the input is a big image with size of 2000 by 2000 pixels. So to have a fair comparison, we make both neural networks to use the same quantity of GPU RAM. The result shows that FCN only took 17 seconds and the CNN took 81 seconds. So we have demonstrated that FCN encoder approach is faster than CNN. This experiment has been run on the supercomputer of the university. In this slide, we're going to assess visually the performance of neural network with water detection. These two heat maps are output of neural network, where the blue color means high probability of water and the red color means low probability. So from the heat map, we can see the output of multi-layer perceptron is very noisy, and the border line is confusing. In contrast, the output of fully convolutional network is very clear and smooth. 
In summary, we have demonstrated that our proposed FCN encoder approach got the best assessment score on the test set, and from the visual inspection of the result, we can observe that the FCN has better generalization and produce a very clear output, which is better than the threshold method and the CNN method. In contrast, the output of the multilayer perceptron are noisy. Also, we have demonstrated that in a real application, the proposed FCN encoder is 4.7 times faster than the CNN. And in conclusion, based on this experiment, we have proved that the proposed FCN encoder approach has a great potential for star image detection. However, there is still a room for improvement since we can observe from the figure that FCN could not detect water with smaller dimension. So for the next step, we will try to improve more the FCM and we will work on mismatched train test distribution to make the next world learn harder sample of water.